Hi folks, welcome to One Minute Math. Today we're talking about the Pythagorean Theorem, which you know might know better as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Context here is that we're talking about right triangles, the side lengths of right triangles, and we can use this theorem to help us find missing sides. In this example, I'm looking for the longest side of the triangle. That's the side that we always have to label c. It does not matter which other sides we label a and b. As a general rule of thumb, I usually label the smallest side a, the middle side b, and the longest side c. The only one that really matters is that the longest side is c. I'm going to write my a squared plus b squared equals c squared statement and just replace what I know. 8 is a, oops, 15 is b, and c is what I'm looking for. Rewrite that again. 8 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. So I will just simply type this right into my calculator. Type in 8 squared plus 15 squared. We get 289. 289 is c squared. All I have to do to get my answer of c is take the square root. Basically, unsquare 289 on your calculator. That might be a standalone button, or you might have to hit the second or the shift button and then the squared button. And that gives me 17. x is 17. Uh, in this example, this is our last example for this little video, um, x is a, is a smaller side. It's not the c. So when I write out my a squared plus b squared equals c squared statement, I say x squared plus 15 squared equals 21 squared. And now I've got to actually do some computation here in the middle but instead of just typing it all in my calculator. Um, 15 squared, I ask my calculator is 225. 21 squared, I ask my calculator is 441. Uh, so then when I do a little subtractorino here to get x alone, just have to do a little bit of algebra. I get x squared equals 216. Um, when I take the square root of that on my calculator, I get a pretty gross number. If you have a nice calculator, it will tell you 6 times the square root of 6 or 6 roots of 6. If you get that answer, please report it. Your teacher will love you. If you get a decimal answer, that's okay too. You should get about 14.7. Either one of those answers are fine uh, for all intents and purposes here in the Pythagorean theorem. I hope you found this video helpful. If you would like a further explanation with a lot more examples, please click the link in the comments to take you to a full explanation video. Thanks for watching.